accord. If Rob has reaped half of it and he reaped half of it and he gives pay from what he reaped, if he reaped no, half that, of it... That, 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 no, that, that is what he must do. He must give pay from what he reaped. Period. I'm on the wrong one? No, no, you're right. You, you just read it wrong. It's a, you put a comma at the end instead of... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. If Rob, if... Rob has reaped half of it and he reaped half of it, he gives pay from what he reaped. If he reaped half of it and he sold half of it, the purchasers could pay it for the whole. If he reaped half of it and he consecrated half of it, the person who redeems it from the treasury gives pay it for the whole. The rectangles of produce between olives, uh, Beit Chalmai says, pay it from each one. Beit Hillel says, from one for all. And they admit that if the tops of the rows are mixed, that he gives pay it from one for all. If a person checkers his field and left moist stalks, Rebbe Kiva says he gives pay it from each one. The common say um, from one and from for all. And the common agree with Rabbi Kiva that if a person uh, sows dill or mustard in three places, he gives pay up for each one. Okay. Okay. Hamachlik betzalim lachim leshuk. Okay, so um, onions um, are, uh, as we've learned before, are chayav in payah. Because they are all all the conditions apply to them. They stay they stay in storage for a long time. Um, is is the important thing over here. But uh, he decides that he's going to um, he's he's going to take out some of the onions now and take them to the shuk, and uh, and and I'll and, and keep the keep, keep a whole bunch in the field that he's going to keep for himself in the um, in right. the storehouse. Okay. Um, Okay. He must leave a payer of each uh, of, of the fresh onions um, out for, for the poor to take, and then he must also leave separate a separate payer for the for the for the uh, onions that he's leaving behind. Why they're treated as two different kinds of produce, basically. Mm -hmm. it, it seems to be analogous to the kind to the two different types of wheat. Where he's having two different uh, gorians, uh, one uh, um, one one for the market and one for for himself. Right. Uh, so we had that with the two different different types of wheat. So you have to leave a uh, two separate payout, even though they are actually the same species. Except one is wet and one's dry. Yes, right. One's wet and one's dry, but that's just a question, a function of how of how long you leave them in the field. Okay. The same thing goes for Afunin, um, uh, and the same thing uh, for Afunim are, uh, how does it translate Afunim? It says beans, um, beans. Beans, right. Okay, so that's kind of like modern Hebrew. Um, Afuna is peas, actually. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they also have a because also some of them you is, uh, you could you could keep them fresh or you could dry them and the same thing goes for a kerim um with the vineyard if you want to take fresh grapes and sell them in the shuk or you want to keep your wine for the vet um those are considered two right. separate types of produce okay a maydell now what happens if somebody is going through his field and saying well it's, it's actually too full it's not going to grow well so he goes and starts pruning and trimming and uh, and thinning out the produce so that it'll grow better Okay, mm -hmm. now he at the end of it he comes for a harvest and, and says, "Look, I trimmed out quite a lot. What? How much do I have to leave payer on? Because again, you've got a minimum shear. Does it go on the original amount, or does it go on the amount that's now in the field? No sin minam mashor al shear. He has to leave over what's what's from what's left over only. You don't count the stuff that you that you trimmed because uh, okay, because that that's not considered produce. It was considered harmful. Okay." But what happens if he takes if he, if he takes out produce from one place only? Okay, so there is that that's it's not it's not because he's trying to even out the whole field. He's just taken a whole bunch of of stuff out of one section of the field, um, and that means that it's not it it wasn't it. it um, it, it wasn't because he was trying to protect the rest of the produce because you're not helping the rest of the produce by taking out one little corner of the field. Okay. No send me So he, he, the payer is based on the original size of the field before he started taking stuff out. Okay. Um, Mishnah Dalad, Ha'ima Hoshel Batalim. So mother of onion. In other words, um, he's using onion for seed, which apparently is something that you can do with onions. You just leave them in the ground. 
you don't harvest them, just leave them then they'll grow some more. Okay. I, I'm I'm not very familiar with farming onions and how and how things are done, but it kind of makes sense because the onion is the bulb that stays in the ground. And if you leave right. it, it'll split and grow into more plants. That just seems to kind of make sense. Okay, so if he decides that he wants to leave uh, leave a bunch of seed onions in the ground, they also hive in payer. But Rabbi Yossi disagrees. He says, if you're not harvesting, you're not. Uh, uh, then there's no payer either. Um, and at the time, right, at the time that you so basically, uh, I think I think the way it works is that. Um, uh, so I think I think the seed onions you actually pull out early. You just you take them out early and uh, um and leave the rest ones to develop in the ground to 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 grow bigger, and then you'll replant the um the 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 early ones. Um, af so they so these mother onions right, um, there so we still have to you still have to give a payer on them, presumably I guess after you've uh, you've harvested them yeah you'd have to leave the payer. Um, from from the harvested goods, oh, Rabbi Yossi put uh, put there. He, he so he says that they're patter from payer because at the time that he that you pulled them out, they weren't edible. Okay, uh, they they're only they're only good for 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 replanting, and therefore he says forget about uh, payer. Malvinos um have betzalim shebena yarak. Now, what happens if you've got vegetables? Now, yarak is not liable to payer. Why? Why does it? Why does it? Uh, it fails on the test of being uh, going into storage. Now, we in our times, Baruch Hashem, we have cold storage. They did not have that in the times of the of the Mishnah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you were growing cucumbers, you harvested them, took them to market, and ate them within days. Okay. Because otherwise, they were just going to rot. Okay. So now let's say you got cucumbers. And or lettuce or whatever it is that uh, that you've got, and you also plant onions in between them. So you planted squares of onions between the between the vegetables. Okay. Um, Rabbi Yossi Omer Peya Mikol Echad Echad says each one of them is a separate is a separate field, and therefore um, you have to um, you, you have to you have to give a separate payer from each one of them. Chachamim mm Omer. -hmm. From, from the from the un, from the cucumbers or the lettuce or whatever, each one is different. No, no, well, no, no. The cucumbers and the the cucumbers don't have payer at all. They're completely part of from payer. We're talking about the onion. There's there, there's some squares of onion on top. Right, right. I I meant that the vegetables, anything that's going, you know, each one of them are, are liable for pay, uh, payer. Mm -mm. Is that no. what he's saying? No, the vegetables are not liable to payer. Everyone agrees. Lettuce, to, to, tomatoes, cucumbers. None of these are liable to pay because they can't right. go into storage. Uh, yes. Right. So that's the rule. Okay. Now we're talking about the onions. So we had all these vegetables that were planted, and he went and planted a whole bunch of squares of onions in between uh, in between the vegetables. Okay. So each square, says Rabbi Yossi, requires its own individual payer. Okay. All the right. of onions. The Chachamim say, al No. That the that the vegetables are not a mafsek because they are not uh, so um um because the chachamim chachamim say that the yarak is not considered chashuv and it's it's not it's not a hefsek um because it's not it's not important regarding uh, it's not relative to the onions it's kind of tafel. And onions, onions, onions can be stored, so that's uh, onions can be stored, which is why we have a uh, right. Yeah. Okay, so some explain that the reason for for chachamim is since the since the onions um, are, are are liable to uh, to payer and the um, and the vegetables are not liable to payer, therefore the the vegetables do not form a mafsik as far as payer is concerned. Now let's contrast that with the the case. Remember, we had the olive trees. We had olive trees and we had squares of uh, of wheat planted between the olive trees, and then there was a machlokis there as well between Beis Hillel and Beis Shammai about whether or not you can have one payer for everyone or each one needs its own separate payer. And there, the olive trees are hive in payer, as are the the wheat things. So that, that that so that might be consistent with that opinion of the Chachamim that it's because they're 
it, it could be either way. I mean, I, I guess either because they're they're they are high in payer or because they're chashuv. Olives themselves are chashuv, and they're not battled to the to the wheat. Okay, Mishnah. Uh, hey, achin shechalku. So you have brothers who inherited a field, and um and they decide and they divided the field and said, okay. Um, Reuben take this half, and Shimon will take that half, and they farm, and they both decide to plant wheat, and the and the fields touch each other, but you know they've got their their marker that designates which is which half is Reuben's and which half is Shimon's. Not going to stay payos. Okay, so they have to give two separate payers. They can't say, okay, you know, we'll we'll agree and and uh, harvest it all together, and you uh, and we'll leave the payer on that corner of the field, and I'll give you a little extra from this corner. No, they have to give two separate payers. Chaz Reuben ishtatfu. They said, you know what? I don't see why we're why we're like doing this individually. You know, we're brothers. Let's let's just go back into this as a joint venture. So they, they combine and now they both jointly own this field. Okay. Nosnin payer achas. Now it's one field owned by two people, and therefore being one field, you can leave one payer. Shnaim shelakhu esa ilan. Now what happens if uh, if they purchased a tree? Okay, two guys came and, and jointly purchased a tree. And now the tree is also chayv in payah. So, nostin payah achas. So, they only have to give one payah, exactly as in the previous case. What happened if lakach zetz fon of dromo, if one took the north and one took the south side of the tree and said, okay, let's put the little paint mark over here. This is your half, this is my half. Um, Each one now has, this clear, has their clearly designated thing, which is analogous to the first case in the Mishnah. Okay. Now, uh, here's a guy who decides that he's got a lot of he's got a lot of saplings in his in his field, and he wants to sell the saplings. He doesn't want to sell the land; he wants to sell the saplings. People must come and dig them up and uh, take them and carry them back to their own land once they've bought them. Okay, so he sells all of these saplings in his uh, in his field. But um, meanwhile, they're they're, they're producing uh, they're producing fruit. And um, so each, so each each buyer has to give a payer from each tree. Or if they're not if they're not sold, but they're designated to be sold, then the owner still has to give a payer from each individual tree because he because he, he they are for sale. They're not they're not considered um, as as one field. Amar Rabbi Yehuda Amasai. When you see Amar Rabbi Yehuda Amasai, he's not arguing with the Tanakama. He's coming to explain. Right, okay. Bizman Shiloshier Balasade. This is only true when the owner of the field himself is not keeping any trees for himself. He wants to get rid of them all. So now clearly the the, the responsibility for payer is devolving onto the purchasers. Right. So if he's leaving some trees over for himself and um and he wants to, and now he's got to leave the he, he's he's the he's the kavua, he's the guy who owns the field. And if anyone comes and buys uh, buys trees off him from that field, then they don't have to worry about the payer. Only the balasadeh has to give payer, and it's got to be proportionate to the original number of trees in the field. Yeah. We're only talking about fruit trees here. Yeah, obviously fruit trees. Fruit trees, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, back to Chesvav. Okay. No blessing may be recited over the light or spices of Gentiles, and not over the light and spices used for the dead, and not over the light and spices before idols, and no blessing is recited over a candle and until benefit is derived from its light. If one dime forgot to recite the grace, Beit Shammai says he must return to the place and recite, and Beit Hillel says he may recite the grace of the meals where he remembered. Till when may he say the grace until the food is digested in his stomach? Uh, if a cup of wine is served after the meal, we just had this in the mission today. We just talked about it in uh, in the uh, in, in dance class. Okay. And what if you, you you ate and you had a meal, you had a sandwich and all that kind of stuff, and then you got on the bus and you left and you said, "Oh, wait a second, I forgot the bench." Do you have to go back, or you you know yeah. bench on the bus? So, yeah. If a cup, of, a cup of wine is served after the after the them after the meal, and there's no other cup but this, this is what Shabbai says he recites the blessing over the wine and afterwards over the food. The Silla says he recites the blessing over the food and afterwards over the wine. One responds with our main to the blessing of the Israelite, but one does not respond with our main to the blessing of the Kutin unless he has heard the entire blessing. 
And um, Gimel Aleph. Regarding one who inserts his hands into a house of afflicted with Taras, his hands are tummy to the first degree. And these are the words of Rabbi Akiva. But the common say his hands are tummy to the degree of sh Shani. Anyone who renders clothes tummy during the time of his contact with his source of tumor makes uh, renders hands tummy, causing them to become tummy to the first degree. These are the words of Rabbi Akiva, but the Akkad Haman say he causes them to become tummy to the degree of Shani. They said to Rabbi Akiva, where do we find anywhere that hands of the first degree of Tuma? He said to them, how is it possible for them to be first degree of Tuma unless his entire body becomes tummy beside these cases? Food and articles that became tummy from liquids render hands tummy, causing them to become tummy to the degree of Shani. These are the words of Rabbi Yeshua. And they can come and say that which be that which became tummy through contact with an avatuma renders hands tummy. But that which becomes tummy through contact with derived tuma does not render hands tummy. If Shimon Ben Gamil said there was an incident concerning a woman who came before my father, and she said to her, My hand sent into the airspace of an earthenware vessel. He said to her, My daughter, what was the source of the tuma? But I did not hear what she said to him. The comment said the matter is clear. That which becomes tummy through an avatuma renders hands tummy. And that which became tummy through derived tumor does not render hands tummy. Okay. Uh, anything that disqualifies tumor renders hands tummy, because, causing them to become tummy to the degree of Shani. One hand can render its pair tummy, but these are the words of Rabbi Yeshua. And they can come and say, a Shani does not create another Shani. And he said to them, but they are not um, Kisfi. Kodesh, tummy to the degree of Shani, and yet they render hands tummy. And they said to him, we cannot deduce words from the Torah from words of the scribes, no words from the scribes from the words of the Torah, no words of the scribes from words of the scribes. Straps, yeah. uh, that's it, right? No, one more, one more. Oh, straps of tefillin are together with the tefillin render tummy hands that touch them. And Shimon says, straps of tefillin do not render tummy hands that touch them. Okay. Uh, that's okay. it. Mikvos. Okay, um, out of base. If one drew from it with a tummy vessel and then a Tahoe person drank from it, it became tummy. It became comes tummy. If one drew from it with a tummy vessel and then one 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 drew from it from a Tahoe vessel, it becomes tummy. If one drew from it with a tummy vessel and then a loaf of tumor fell into it, it is his wrist. If it is rinsed, he becomes tummy, and if it is not rinsed, it remains tahoe. If tummy water fell into it, and a tahoe person drank from it, it becomes tummy. If tummy water fell into it, and then one drew from it into a tahoe vessel, it becomes tummy. If tummy water fell into it, and then a loaf of chuma fell into it, it is rinsed. If he rinsed it, it becomes tummy. And if he did not rinse it, it remains tahoe. Reb Shimon says whether he rinsed it or whether it did not rinse, it becomes tummy. If a corpse fell into it and a tummy person walked through it and then a Tahoe person drank from it, he becomes, he, re he remains Tahoe. Water in water holes, water in cisterns, water in ditches, water in caves, water in said seeps, it has ceased seeping, has ceased sweet seeping, and mikvos that do not contain for what he saw are all alike. During the rainy season, they are all deemed Tahoe, and when the rain ceased, uh, the near a town or road that are, de are deemed Tahoe. But those who are distant are deemed Tahoe until such a time that there are many walkers. Okay. Okay. Hey, Aleph. The entire court was was one hundred eighty-seven amas in length and one hundred by by one hundred thirty-five amas in width. From the from the east to the west, the courtyard measured one hundred eighty-seven amos. The entire area in which Yisraelim walked measured eleven amos. The area in which Gohanim walked measured eleven amos, and the altar measured thirty-two amos. Between the antechamber and the altar measured twenty-two amos. The hekel measured one hundred amos, and seven, eleven amos behind the chamber of the ark uh, cover. From the north to the south, the courtyard measured 135 amos, and the ramp in the altar measured 62 amos. From the altar to the rings was 8 amos. The area of the rings measured 24 amos, and from the rings to the tables was 4 amos. From the tables to the dwarf pillars was 4 amos. From the dwarf pillars to the northern wall of the courtyard was 8 amos. The remainder was between the ramp and the southern wall of the courtyard and the area of the dwarf pillars. 
There were six chambers in the courtyard, three in the north and three in the south. Those in the south, the salt chamber, the paraffin chamber, the rinsing chamber, the salt cha the, uh, chamber. The salt chamber, uh, there they put the salt for the offerings. And the parva chamber is where they hold salt and hides the kadoshim. And on its roof was a mikvah for the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur. The rinsing chamber, they would uh, rinse the innards of the kadoshim offerings. And from there, a spiral cast hangs, spare staircase ascends to the roof of the parva chamber. Okay. okay. Uh, from here, we're going to go on to uh, Kinim. I'm sorry, Kinim? Yeah. Okay. Hold on, see. Um, Tess Aleph. If one leases a field from another where it is customary to cut the crops, he must cut. To uproot, he must uproot. To plow afterwards, he must plow, all according to local practice. Just as they share the grain, so they share the stubble and the straw. Just as they share the wine, so they share the branches and the canes, and both of them provide the canes. If one leases a field from another, it is an irrigated, if it is an irrigated field or a field containing a tree, if the spring dried, if the spring dried up or the tree fell, he may not deduct from his rent. If he said to him, Lease me this irrigated field or this field containing a tree, and if the spring dried up or the tree was cut down, he may deduct from his rent. If one leaves the field from another and left his fallow, he assess how much it was fit to yield, and he must give it to him. Uh, but so he writes to him, if I leave it, uh, it fallow or do not till it, I will pay the best. If I, one leaves the field from another and did not wish to weed it, if he says to him, what concern is it of yours since I am paying you as rental? We do not listen to him since he can say to him, tomorrow you withdraw from it. And Hold on, oh, sorry, we, we went, we, I, I, I lost you for a second, but that's uh, Mishnah Dalit is for tomorrow. Tomorrow? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. And we have the quote. Okay. Olive base. Said Rebbe, Shud, Rebbe Huda, at first they would uproot and throw the Kaliah before them. When the number of transgressors increased, they would uproot and throw the Kaliah upon the roads, and finally they instituted that they declare the entire field ownerless. On the 15th of the Dharma, money chambers would sit in the province, on the 25th they were sat in the temple. From the time they sat in the temple, they would commence to seize collateral. From whom did they collect collateral? From the Levium and Yisraelim. Proselytes and freed slaves, but not from women, slaves, or minors. However, in the case of a minor whose father has com uh, commenced to contribute the half shekel on his behalf, the father should not cease to do so. For the sake of peace, he did not collect collateral from the fifth Kohanim. They said to Rebbe Yehuda ben Bukri, testified in Yavah that any Kohanim contributes to the half shekel has not sinned. Now, when Yochan and Ben Zakai replied to Ben Bukri, it is not so. Rather, any Kohanim does not contribute to the half shekel has sinned, though the Kohanim a mistake here. But the Kohanim interpret the following verse for their own benefit. Every meal offering of a, a Kohen shall be entirely burnt, may not be eaten. If the Omer offering, the two loaves and the pot of bread are ours, how may they be eaten? Okay. Okay. All right. okay. okay. Have a great Shabbos. Enjoy. And I will see you uh, Sunday morning. That's Thank you. Bye-bye.